Shabbat Shalom. Shalom Shabbat. Yahweh was serious about what we understood about Ever, Ivri, Ivrit, Ivriyim, Hebrew, a nation of Hebrews, and one man representing the whole nation as if the nation was behind him, Ivriyim, and the rabbinic of Ever, Ayin, Bet, Resh. Ayin, pictorial is uh, an eye to perceive or see, to know, understand. Bet, the house, the focal point of production, house. The continuation, ben, the continuation of the seed. And uh, resh is the head, it's the top, it's the beginning of fulfilling your purpose as man. And also in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, there's a passage there that's not taught about too much in believing circles. And it, it's in the context of uh, women having authority over men. And it gives the First covenant example of verse 13, because Adam was formed first, then his Nikeva. And we know that Yahweh walked and talked with Adam and instructed him. And in turn, Adam was to instruct his Nikeva about what their purpose was. And in verse 14, it says, And Adam was not deceived because of his intimate relationship with Yahweh, he was not deceived, but the woman being seduced or deceived, she fell into transgression. But Adam's failure was, instead of gently admonishing her for gallivanting with a serpent and uh, interceding on her behalf before Yahweh, he followed her lead shame on him and so as a result of his following her lead they both fell into rebellion and lost the essence of light that put them in harmonious relations with Yahweh heaven conjoined with earth and so her transgression did not get her in trouble him following her transgression got her in trouble. <laughs> and so verse 15 says, Nevertheless, she will be saved. The Hebrew says, There is to her, it says, Leshla Teshua Vabanim Asher Teled says, Nevertheless, there is to her salvation in or with the sons that she will birth. That's powerful. I don't know why that is not magnified in reminding the body of the Messiah, the women, the daughters of the body of Abraham, of Israel, where their salvation lies. Because this spirit of this age is what Revelation 17 talks about. And one of the assemblies in Revelations chapter 2 and 3, the spirit of Jezebel. Huh? And in our present day, we see how men have not protected women from themselves, which they were exposed to in the garden, making them more susceptible to spirits like uh first corinthians 11 talks about she needs to have cover or spiritual authority over her head because of the messengers she made herself more susceptible to spirits and so therefore she needs the male cover and spiritual authority protection protected from herself 
And when she finds herself overflowing the riverbanks of her role in the relationship, he is to wisely share with her her determined role and character so that she can stay harmonized with him and Yahweh. Because the scripture says uh, when she finds herself getting out of character and determined role, that he is to rule over it. The word rule is mashal, uh, meaning to determine role and character and uh, wisely bring it to her attention so that she can voluntarily get back in the lane that will allow her to be a faithful pillar of support and uh, decider in the relationship as his, as the complement of his spirit. She compliments him as he compliments Yahweh. So, yeah, that harmony. But the point is, uh, nevertheless, her salvation is, there is to her salvation with sons that she will birth. We see the world has um, women not wanting to have children. <laughs> there is no reason why not to have children. And because to, to desire to have children is to have children according to the way Yahweh set it up to have children. And when that desire is there, then uh, that's in the will of powers and he will, whatever you ask, we know he will give it to you. And he gives us the desires of our hearts. Not that you have your own desire outside of his will, because we are all on the altar of sacrifice, are we not? We are living sacrifice. <laughs> So, 2 Corinthians 5, 15, And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. 2 Corinthians 5, 15, right? So, when the scripture says, He gives us the desires of our heart, it's not your desires to do what you want. <laughs> it's He gives us His desires and His will, which we are pursuing and exerting our energy to that goal. Because the beginning of that verse says, delight yourself in Yahweh, and He will give you desires of your heart. So if you're delighting yourself in Him, you know it's not about you, it's about Him and His purpose on earth. Now, you follow me? So, it's becoming simpler. Because the world is in a quandary right now, and Yahweh shut it down, to expose all the distractions that have been successful in captivating our hearts and minds. Yeah? So he shut it, he shut it down. They, they did a good job in psychologically, a psyop, a psyop, mm -hmm. psychological operations, yeah? mm -hmm. to get people, which is the way Satan operates, huh? He... He says, you can't blame him. So he says, you can't blame me. You chose to do that. But he seduced you into making the choice. Yeah? So the world, uh, we, we were born in, into a, a, a time where the distractions and the societal setups were already there. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we thought it was normal. Not knowing that Everybody's doing what's right in their own eyes. We're doing our own thing and not doing what Yahweh. Even in the so-called church, in religion, you find that although they confess a religion, they're still doing their own thing. Their way. You follow? Now, this morning, Yahweh, he just posed to me a question. He says, if you didn't give yourself life, right? Did anybody give themselves the life that they have? No. Okay, so 
if you didn't give you life, why are you trying to live it your way? Do we understand? If you didn't give to you life, why are you trying to take control of it and live it out according to your way? Why not automatically seek the one who gave you the life and ask the question, why? And he will give you the answer. Which it is written, isn't it? <laughs> it's written. <laughs> Be fruitful, multiply. I created you to and gave you life so that you can duplicate yourself. And in duplicating yourself, you are duplicating me. And as you obey that, you will find out why in the end. Reach the end first. Show yourself faithful to me, and there are rewards. Do we understand? Everybody wants to do what they want to do. And we are striving to... There's a song that we've learned recently that says, uh, Yah, tear down the walls I've built up, which are blocking you from... Relating to me and instructing me. Huh? Come, tear down the walls I've built up. Every wall I've built up. Because you, you deserve every piece of my heart. You deserve every piece of my heart. You see? So, it's not about me. It's not about you. It's about him who made us aware of existence. You follow me? I didn't give it to me. You didn't give it to you. He did. So there's a reason. Cause and effect. Right? So that's, that's natural. That's automatic. Adam did it. As soon as Yahweh breathed in his body, giving him life, it's, it, the Hebrew says, Shachar. Right? It was intrinsic within his DNA, his melanin, to seek with painstaking urgency him who gave him the life. Just like a, 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 a newborn babe, right, is born. What happens, mamas? They seek the nourisher. They seek the nourisher. And that brings me to this word, El Shaddai. El Shaddai, meaning power, El is power, Shaddai from Shad is uh, nourishment, breast, field, what does a field do, huh? You cultivate the field, it brings forth vegetation, food for man, we'll see that in Psalm 104, power of nourishment. They mistranslate that as uh, God Almighty. L is uh, what they translate as G-O-D. And uh, Shaddai is uh, Shada is uh, produce nourishment. Being productive. Oops. Right? A field, a breast, a vineyard. That's Shaddai. I don't know where they gave, they got, I know why they did it, Almighty, because they want to take people away from the basic fundamental principles of obedience to fulfill your purpose. You know, so a, 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 as soon as a child is born, they seek the nourishment of the mother's breast to be developed. Yeah, I mean, everything is about being productive, nourishment. He is the mighty nourisher. He is the power of nourishment. So wherever you see God Almighty, it's El Shaddai. You follow me? So we harmonize unto Him, and uh, He will make us productive with giving us constant nourishment. Like the, the THC in the breast milk of a woman just from birth to 
the development stops at puberty when they're 12. Yeah, it continues. It's just developing cells and to full development. You see? After, after puberty, after 12, then is developing to die. Oh. <laughs> yeah. The woman is, is ready to birth children. She, she's fully developed. The boy, because we followed her, we stupid, so it, we, it takes us a while longer. <laughs> We're strong enough to be, you know, carry out duties and whatnot, but uh, we kind of slow with that. And so we, 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 a man is matured at 40, 40 years. The woman is matured at 12 years. So that, that says a lot. So power of nourishment. Doing our own thing, huh? Which we have to stop. So Yahweh shut the world down because his people are misrepresenting. And he's trying to force us to return to him and get back to the basics, right? And he exposed the, uh, the world's psyop upon us. Yeah? Look, watch this psyop. Trump's four years in office, every single day he was being touted, proclaimed in mainstream media as an idiot, right? Yeah. And uh, so they, they, they were making a lot of money, getting a lot of, because <laughs> they had a focus. Yeah. And so all that repetition, 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 convinced believers even mm. to disdain him so much, hate him so much, that they were willing to compromise their morals, their spiritual principles, just to get him out of office. They set aside their morality <laughs> to, to vote for somebody who was obviously <laughs> for things that are abominable to the scriptures to put him in. Psyop. Bewitched the uh, spell that it, it was, it cast a spell on believers, even. You see, I don't care, get him out, he's an idiot. What did he do? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If anything, he was for, uh, uh, he, 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 he wasn't for LGBTQ stuff, yeah. he stopped that, right? Stopped that locomotive, <laughs> he was. He wasn't for abortion, yeah. right? And uh, he he did increase the economy. You follow me? He he was, you know, people. You know, I was born on welfare. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Most most blacks are existing off of gov government subsidies, mm -hmm. and so you know, you 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 have a dependent spirit. You have to kill off or let the Yahweh purge you from. Hands out. Give me, give me, give me, give me. You owe me. You follow me? At least he was like, no, pull up your bootstrap. Take care of yourself. Do your own thing. And I thought that's what, you know, blacks were like desirous of. You know what I'm saying? You know, don't just give me an equal playing field. Leave me alone. But just give me an equal playing field. Right? That's what I thought. But... People didn't, you know, they didn't, they didn't look at what he was accomplishing for the country. They were distracted by what mainstream media was propagandizing him about. You see, they, they, they lied about the Russia debacle. They tried to impeach him. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't work. You follow me? He stood strong against all the attacks or whatever like that. And uh, so they psyoped and bewitched everybody into just, just get him out of office. Okay? And so now, you know, and they voted for people, for a guy who was obviously, you know, showed pedophile whoop-de-whoops, menenos. <laughs> That's a, a Swahili whoop-de-whoop, menono. 
<laughs> and so people just like, I don't care. I'll quit inviting him as long as he's out. So they compromised their belief in children should not be aborted because it was obvious they were for abortion, women's rights to choose. Women do have a right to choose. That's between you and, but you don't legislate it. You don't use taxpayers' monies to finance it, yeah. the killing of unborn children. You follow me? Um, yeah, everybody has a right to do what they want to do. And that right will be protected, right? But you don't force it upon those who don't believe the way you do. Yeah? And even the LGBTQ thingy, right? Everybody has a right to do what they want to do. Yeah, you can, if you want to kiss a man, kiss a man. But don't legislate it. And then put it in the education system to indoctrinate those who don't know their right hand from their left, that this is available to them. You follow me? And then I, th I thought they just wanted to have the right to be who they wanted to be. Now they took it to where, give us the right to marry. And then they took it to give us a right to, <laughs> you follow me? So there's another agenda involved, which now we see, right? It's about now transgender stuff, right? Now people who's obviously men, can make it their mind they want to be a woman. People who's obviously women can make up their mind they want to be a man. And then the government will pay for it. <laughs> well, you're paying for it because it's your taxpayers' money that's doing it, right? And now in the military, they're doing it. You follow me? So this is since the new, the Biden guy in there. You follow me? You see? So all the believers, I wonder how, if they're being convicted about what have they done. You see, because now immorality is uh, reigning supreme and perversion. And, and guess what? Satan is behind the whole thing to stop us being fruitful and multiplying. That's it. To stop us doing the purpose by which we have been given life. At the end of the day, that's what it is. Homosexuals cannot recreate. And you know, it's, it's all satanic, but, and he's using humanity to carry out his frustrations from being kicked out of heaven, right? He, he wanted so much to be in the place of Yahweh, right? He's, he's striving to do it. He's striving to do it through humanity and using us as pawns in his uh, detesting yeah. Yahweh because <laughs> his coup didn't work. All the Hollywood people, all the celebrities, yeah, satanic, B Baphomet. You follow me? The Baphomet being androgynous. So at the end of the day, people, you're being used by the enemy of your soul, yeah. Satan. Satan is still, this is the only way he can war against the creator of heaven and earth, by going after the pupil of his eye. We are the pupil of the eyes of Yahweh. And Yahweh says, the pupil of our eye should be the Torah. Imagine the pupil, and we know the pupil is where you see through. So they mistranslate that as the apple of his eye. We're not the apple of his eye. It's just like they said it was the fruit that was bitten of in the garden was an apple. It wasn't no apple. Come on, people. Father, help us this year. Thank you for helping us. Right? So we are the pupil of his eye, meaning he sees through us in the earth. And he says, tells us in Proverbs that the Torah is to be the pupil of our eye. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 2. Keep my commands and live in my Torah as the pupil of your eye. Bind them on your fingers, write them on the tablet of your heart. Because you will acquire and absorb knowledge, which is wisdom, hachma. And say to wisdom, you are my sister, and call understanding, bina, understanding and alien action of elements, comprehending, right? And call understanding your nearest kin. That they may keep you from the immoral woman, from the seductress who flatters with her words, O man. Oh, son, you follow? 
So all these distractions that people want to get back to as normal. So here's the other side. Huh? So last year they did the lockdowns for a whole year. And now they're going into the second, third phase of it in 2021, mm -hmm. right? So people have been conditioned so long with the lockdowns that now they just, they'll do anything to get back to what they believe was normal, which that normal was a, a satanic setup to distract you from Yahweh. <laughs> but they don't care. So they will do whatever the government say do, uh, get COVID tests, take, get vaccines, so you can get back to normal. Wear double masks to get back to normal because they want to get, they want their life back, right? And what was their life? They was able to do whatever they wanted to do. Go to church when I want to go to church, go to the movie when I go to the movie, go to the club when I want to go to the club, go out and eat where I want, when I want to go out and eat. I can eat whatever I want to because I got hospitals there. I got health insurance, which will pay for my sicknesses and diseases when I get them because of the food I'm eating and the lazy life I'm living. But at least I'm doing what I want to do. <laughs> you follow me? Yeah. Don't you want to have children? Uh, no. <laughs> How many children you got? Two? You should have more. No. I don't want They two. Uh. Who teaches your children? I send them to school. You don't send your children to school? Why? Do you trust in governments? Are they all not corrupt? Yeah, they are. Well, they all went to the school you sent your children to and graduated. <laughs> so you expect different from them. They're getting the same education, especially if they go to university and they got their choices are limited. The only thing they educate your children with is how to maintain the system of society that they engineered and set up. Not being free. We did the upload on that. A son a slave, a sovereign, that upload. You know, an employee is just a neo-slave. You know, a guy asked me, he said, hey, you, you, you don't send them to school? I'm like, no, for what? It was, well, how will they deal in society? I said, they will rule. <laughs> they will lead. You send your children to school, right? They'll work for mine. <laughs> mine are being educated and equipped to rule and reign in the victories of Yeshua that he has accomplished already. We ask Yahweh for the nations as an inheritance, the ends of the earth as a possession. And we claim, we claim it. Did not Yeshua say, if you ask anything according to his will, he'll give it to you? There you have it. That's a desire of his heart that he puts in you to seek after. Amen. And he made us a kingdom of priests. We're all priests. We graduated, right? And here's another thing Yahweh showed about the individuality, right? Yeah. So Moses came into his identity when he was 40. And Yahweh took him out in the wilderness to deprogram him from the knowledge of his pride from being raised in Egypt, yeah? And it was him and Yahweh. So he and he came and uh, brought the nation out, yeah? Samuel was dedicated to work under Eli, the priest of Israel, when he was three years old. When he was 12, the scripture says, no, so he served Eli in the temple, grew up there. When he was 12, Yahweh called him to that one-on-one -on -one individual relationship, right? Because the scripture says he did not yet know Yahweh. So children begin their individual mano-on-mano -mano with Yahweh at puberty, yeah? And then that's when they, with understanding, get immersed, and then they take on the nature of... Uh, Yahweh and begin their walk to fulfill their purpose, right? From birth to that time, the parents, the father, 
and the mother temper that bent towards rebellion. We temper that nature of Satan in them with the rod and limitations upon them, right? While mama is putting in her, in the children, the Torah, and daddy's modeling it and teaching and being the sheep, the, the priest, the shepherd, the pastor of his home, right? So my point with uh, Samuel and Eli was Samuel heard the voice of Yahweh calling him. He went to Eli three times, and then Eli recognized that, ooh, it's his time. Mm -hmm. He says, next time you hear the voice, you say, uh, speak, Yahweh, for your servant hears. Right? Daber Yahweh ki shomea avdeka. So Eli says, ooh, that's between you and Yahweh, dude. Next time, this is how you respond. <laughs> and then he, he began his walk. And then when Elijah, Eliyahu, was called to go and anoint Elisha, his disciple, to take his place after 21 years, <laughs> which that was the time frame of discipleship with Elisha, when he went and anointed him, and then he just anointed him and he left, and then Elisha said, can I go back and do my... He says, man, what have I got to do with you? You you see to it. You know what I'm saying? I'm just doing what Yahweh told me to do. You got your own walk with him. He's calling you. Whatever he tells you to do, you do. I'm out. <laughs> you follow me? And then in the second covenant, the new covenant, Peter, Yeshua, John and them, and Peter was concerned about John not receiving the responsibility that Yeshua put upon him. And Yeshua said, dude, leave him. You focus on what I'm telling you. If I want John, Yohanan, to stay here until I return, that's between me and him. But you, so, and this is where churches fail. Religious churches keep men dependent upon them and not exhort them to have their own walk with Yahweh who will direct them on the purpose they're supposed to fulfill having everybody being with you, having everybody depend upon you. Because we have a proclivity in us to be lazy. We don't want responsibility. We did the upload about being a Hebrew. What it is to be a Hebrew is to, is to be responsible. When you embark on the journey that Yahweh has you on, you're going to, be, you're going to have to be responsible to it. It's not in us to be responsible and take on <laughs> the burdens of others. We don't want that. The world caters to our wants. The world is set up to distract you from that investment and responsibility that Yahweh has put upon each of us as individuals. You see? And so we, we have to be men and women and, and be truthful to ourselves and to Yahweh who has made us the pupil of his eyes and given us his Torah to make it the pupil of our eye and keep his commands. So there's that partnership with the creator of heaven and earth that each of us has. And we all have roles to play with one another, men with women, women and men with children. That's it. There's nothing else outside of that. <laughs> families. Relating to other families. That's it. That's the nation. There is no individuals outside of a family. That's satanic. There are no individuals living on their own. Me against the world. You lose. The world has you if you have that attitude and mindset. The world has you. You're deceived. <laughs> And uh, there's power in numbers. In a multitude of counsel, there's safety. Yeah? And accountability comes with that. Yahweh reigns.